What's your relationship like with Martin Allen compared to some of the other managers you've appointed here? Well, I've got to say that um, in 18 years now I've been chairman and uh, another two years I get the gold watch, I think, from the Football League, so that'd be exciting. <laughs> and um, I've always uh, got on with all my managers, really, even, even uh, those that have ended up probably not so well. Um, and there haven't been many of those, but I've always had a good relationship with managers. I, th I think that uh, to have a successful team or to have any chance of having a successful team, uh, you need to have a good relationship between the chairman and the manager. And if you look over history and even recent history with so many managers being sacked uh, throughout the whole Football League and the Premier League this year, you often find that the relationship's never been right from the start or it's broken down quite early between either the chief executive, there's no chairman around, or the chairman and the manager. And uh, I think for the manager's point of view and for the chairman's point of view, that relationship is key. And I always knew when I was interviewing last June uh, that I was looking at people thinking, could I have that close relationship that I need to share every moment, really. And, and I think from a manager's point of view, you know, there are times where managers feel very down. You know, they, 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 they take the brunt of some fairly heavy pressure at times. And I think if a chairman reacts in a hostile way after a loss, it only furthers the manager's despair, if you like. You know, who else does he talk to? You know, and I think that with Martin, I understand football. You know, I've been in football as a chairman for almost 20 years now. And uh, I understand that you don't go out there to play badly. Sometimes you do go out and play badly and lose a game. Uh, but the despair everyone feels is the same despair I feel. Uh, and the manager feels, of course. So the last thing he wants is to get an earful from a chairman about how, what we should have done and how it went wrong and what we could have done. Because you know that himself, what, what he could have done. Uh, and of course, no one goes out to lose a game. So I think that relationship is, is very important and I think the emotional side of it is extremely important. And if you can get that right, which I think myself and Martin have got it right, um, you've got a chance of getting a good team out there on the pitch performing. What are Martin Allen's key qualities? What's really stood out to you? He's a great organiser. He's, he's very calm with the players, which is not what I expected, but I'm pleased he is. Um, he doesn't particularly go into rants and raves or if he does, it's very infrequent. Uh, he's meticulous in his detail. He's, he's almost uh, OCD in his preparation, which is fine. Um, he wants everything to be right, no matter how small the detail is, which is right. Uh, and I think the players have a lot of respect for him because I think he looks after the players and he understands players. Um, and if he has to chop a player or do something that's quite ruthless or something that wouldn't be pleasant, he does it in a nice way. And uh, that's all good man management. So I think, I think those are his qualities. There's been nine managerial changes in your 18 years here. Do you see yourself sticking by Martin Allen for a long time? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, never, um, I've never, I don't think I've ever sacked a manager. I think I've always just sat down at the end of a season if it's not been going well and said, look, you know, this is not going to work going forward. Um, you know, you, you might be better getting another job. And, you know, I'm not really a hatchet man. You know, I don't think because the results go badly, I necessarily chop a manager. Um, I just think that there are times where it's quite clear that the manager is uncomfortable in the zone that he's in and it's better for all parties if he removes himself from that zone, so to speak. So you don't sack them, but you invite them to leave? Well, I suggest they might be better off somewhere else. <laughs> but no, sacking's a very emotive word, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of quite a hard word. And you know, I don't think people have failed because they haven't achieved success. It just means that it hasn't the right, the chemistry's not been right. And uh, there are, I've, I, I mean, I've got lots of friends that are, are our ex-managers, you know, People like Ronnie Jepson, Stan Turnham, Andy Hessenthaler, Doug Peter Taylor, Mark Stimson. You know, they're all people I talk to quite frequently. Um, and it's not, you know, I don't have any, I don't, they're not enemies because they failed. You know, I feel, I feel, I want them to succeed. You know, it's, it's better for me that they succeed. Um, there is a danger, of course, they succeed and go elsewhere. But, but I understand that as well. That's part and parcel of the job, isn't it? For you, 18 years here now, this club, enjoyed the most successful era of its history at the turn of the century, five years in what is now the championship. Can you get back there? Do you still have the hunger, the drive, the enthusiasm to try and get Gillingham back, not just to League One, but into the championship? Yeah, I think so. You know, I look at Swansea, you know, and I was actually driving here this morning from the airport thinking, if there was a model that I would copy and follow, it's the concept of a Swansea. Because they didn't have mega money behind them. Um, they were just nice people who loved football and 
you know, they've always been nice people. You know, Hugh Jenkins, I've got a great lot of time for. We had great banter when I was in the championship and League One, as was he, and League Two and the old third division and whatever, it, you know. And I, and I look at them and I think they've taken a very average club into the Premiership and made it a lovely club, a good club. I'm not saying it wasn't a good club before, I'm just saying it was a kind of a, a move stadium and, uh, and, and they play good football, they play attractive football. And I think they've won the hearts and souls of a lot of neutrals in, in the way they've gone about their business. And, and they haven't spent fortunes. And I, and I dare say they're not tens of millions in debt. So they haven't done a Portsmouth or you know, a few other clubs that have gone that way, a Bolton perhaps or Blackburn. Um, and they've got a lot of respect. And I think, I think they've done it on a modest budget, but they've done it with football people. And I think that's a good model. And I think if, if people look at the Swansea model, um, it's, it's easily repeated again. You can, you can get to the Premiership without having a Abramovich or a, a whoever else behind you um, because you can do it with proper football people. And I think Martin Allen is a proper football person. And I have no doubt that in the fullness of time he will manage in the Premier League. With Gillingham? That would be good. I'll settle for that. <laughs> so is the Premier but it's not, it's, not, it's not impossible. And it, it, you know, we, some people laugh at that concept, but there are more and more clubs that are not the favoured Premiership style clubs that are now getting back into or into the Premiership for the first time and are sustaining Premiership football.